Hey everybody, welcome to Alex Plays Fishing Planet. Now in this particular episode, I want to talk to you guys about what you are going to need for the absolute beginner when it comes to Fishing Planet. So this is the Lone Star Lake in Texas, and if we open up the map, uh, we can definitely see that. The Lone Star Lake in Texas. And it doesn't matter that I'm on day three of fishing, I'm just simply pointing out a, a couple of things here. So. When you first start out, you're going to be using a rod and a reel that looks very similar to mine. And let's keep this in mind if you are just starting. You haven't bought a single thing in the game. This is what you'll start with. You'll start with a rod and a reel. Now, it won't be this exact rod or this exact reel, but it will look very similar and it will behave very similar. So let's talk about a few things that you need to know before getting into the game. Now, a lot of the trouble I see from players that are fishing in this particular place, especially new players, is they can't figure out how to cast, how to catch, how to accurately know when the bobber is ready to be reeled in because you've got a fish on the end of it. So let's quick first talk about the buttons, the main buttons of the game that will help you get used to everything that you can do with your fishing rod, with your fishing reel, and your fishing bait. So if I can direct your attention to the top left hand corner of the screen, we can see this press F1 for help. If we press F1, we can see every single hotkey button in the game. Now a lot of people, they can't figure out uh, what some of these particular things mean. So pitch on or off. What is a pitch on or off? Let's, let's go ahead and use an example. So when you are using a telescopic float rod, which is what you start the game with, it always, no matter what lake you are on, starts in a pitch mode. And when you pitch a, a bait, it will go straight out in front of you and you really have absolutely uh, no control over it except for the general direction in which you cast it. Now you can kind of aim it so let's say I'm looking at my bobber and I'm looking at my rod. It's going to go roughly in here, right? So if I cast that out and then I reel it back in, we just saw where it landed. So I wanted it to land right in there. So we can safely say that it's going to land in the center of where you're pitching it. So that gives you an idea of how to cast in pitch mode. But if we turn pitch mode off, again, that is the hotkey F11, we get a different kind of cast setting. Now I'm going to go ahead and move. And as you can see, we're no longer holding the rod in a more vertical fashion with the line and the bobber hanging down. So when you pitch a line, all, all you would do in real life if you're an actual fisherman is you would hold on to your hook and you would use an, a, a very slight underhand swing and you would let go of the bait. And this is to give you a very short, very accurate and very controlled descent on where your bait goes, making as little noise on entry as possible. But let's say you want to cast farther. Let's, let's say you don't want to fish right next to these lily pads or you don't want to fish right next to those lily pads. You want to you wanna reach out and get to those lily pads or, or maybe you're standing here and you want to reach out and get to those lily pads without having to you know move all over and fuss about. You can do that. So if we once again go into the F1 menu, we can take a look at a couple of the options. So we can see that the right mouse button is to pull, strike, and aimed cast. So if we just hold down the left mouse button, we get a meter on the right hand side that goes up and down, which controls how far we can cast our lure. So let's do a nice short one. We can see it goes into the water very aggressively. We'll reel it in. And then if we fill up the meter, now the bait goes much farther. So we have more control over the distance. But if we really want to pinpoint where the bait is going to go, so let's say I want this bait to go exactly here. The precision aim mode by pressing down the right mouse button opens up a meter. So now we can fill up the meter and then press down the left mouse button again 
and there we go. We have our bait in a very close spot to where we initially wanted it. So let's go ahead and reel that in. Now that you guys know how to switch between your modes, let's talk about how to catch fish. So you start off with uh, some fairly small gear, and I don't actually have super small gear on me, but your rod and reel will come with a hook, similar in size and shape to this one, and you'll also get some uh, red worms. So let's talk about how we want to set up our bait. If we open up F1 again, uh, we can see a couple of options that kind of cascade down the keyboard. Let's first talk about plus and minus on the horizontal numbers. Not on the number pad, but the horizontal numbers on the main keyboard. If we press minus or plus, we will change our drag setting. If we press Z, um, O or P, we'll change our leader length setting. If we press K or L, we'll adjust our reeling speed setting. So let's talk quickly about uh, those particular uh, options right there. So if we press plus or minus, and let me pull your attention down here to the very bottom right hand corner of the screen, we have a circle that is filling up with increasingly or decreasingly illuminating bars around a central arrow. This is your drag setting and it controls how powerful the poundage is on the resistance the fish has to pull against. So let's quick talk about that. Let's take a look at your uh, fishing rod. We're going to press I to open up the inventory and then we're going to press this little arrow. This is going to open up our details. Okay. So. First, we'll look at our reel, because that's what we're interested in. It has a maximum drag of 6.4 pounds. If we take the 0.4 out of the equation, we get 6. So that's a nice, safe estimate. Okay, so we round down to get 6. That means that our reel, when we fill up that circle, will have roughly 6 pounds of resistance. And this goes for if you are using the metric system as well. So if it's three kilograms, four kilograms, it doesn't really matter. You can apply the same techniques with a little bit of math uh, converting to your numeric system. So in this case, my rod, the Windcast 2500, has a maximum drag of six pounds when we round it down. Now we want to take a look at our rod. It has a line weight of between three and five pounds. We want to ignore this first number here. What we are interested in is this maximum number here. This nine pounds is greater than six pounds. And why is that important? If we were to max out our drag, we would need 6.4 pounds of pull force before one of two things happen, or one of three things happens actually. First would be either your line snaps. Second would be either your reel snaps, or third would be either your rod snaps. Now the way we control what snaps in order to prevent us from losing gear is we take these numbers, the nine pound, the largest number on our rod, the rounded down number of our reel, but we'll talk about the, uh, why we round it down in a second. So we know it's 6.4 pounds, and the pound test of our line. So we know our rod can take 9 pounds maximum before it breaks, our reel takes 6.4 pounds maximum before it breaks, and if we quick check on my monofilament, we can see the 0.23 millimeter, or the point, or the 9 thousandths of an inch a monofilament, which is a 6 pound monofilament, will take 6 pounds before it breaks. Hmm, you see what I'm going here with. So 6.4 and 9 is greater than 6 which means my line will always break before my reel and before my rod. Because it's much, much better if you have to break line to lose a lure and fishing line than it is to lose a reel and a rod. Uh, replacing a rod, or replacing a broken rod or a reel is much more expensive than replacing a single lure and a little bit of line. Okay, so now that we know that, let's take that rounded number now, this particular reel. We know that that is six when we round it down. So when we head back out, we can see that our meter here has six settings, and this is why we round it down. Each time 
we increase, we can estimate that that drag setting is going up by a pound. That's why we round down, is to be on the safe side. So if we were to set it all the way, we know for a fact it's 6.4. But if we move it down one, we know that it's five pounds. So our drag is well within the safe limits of our fishing rod, our fishing reel, and our fishing line. So unless we were to get what's called spooled, a fish won't be able to put enough pressure on the rod, the reel, and the line to break it. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about the mechanics of how the line and the pound test is associated with the rod, the reel, and the line, let's talk about how to use that information to catch some fish. So we have our hook, we have our bobber, we have our bait. We know how to cast our rod, we know how to effectively set the drag on our line. Now the last thing we need to know about is reel speed. So let's go ahead and just set this reel speed to one and I'm going to cast it out there. Okay, and you'll see as, as I retrieve or reel in, it's not going particularly fast. You can see right here down in the bottom that my hand is, is not moving particularly fast. And it takes quite a bit to reel in that just over 50 feet that we cast the line out at. So, to increase that, <laughs> we actually had a fish chasing it, that's kind of funny. So if we increase that by using um, K and L, and yes, you can go backwards. So if I wanted to let more line out, for instance, I could do that. But every time we increase that arrow, we increase our retrieve speed. So we know how long it took for me to retrieve it on the number one setting. Now we'll take a look at it on the number four setting. And every reel that I've used so far um, has acted very similar in having four reel speed settings. Okay, so we want our reel to be fast. So let's talk about the very uh, last setting that is in our F1 hotkeys area. And that is changing our leader line length. We can increase how deep the bait is away from the bobber by just pressing the, um, the O and the P keys. So when you're just doing some basic fishing uh, for panfish, you don't need a particularly um, big leader line. You know, like 15, 10, 15, 20 inches is absolutely more than enough to catch some panfish. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this. We're at 15 inches. We've got a number four hook on, which is the smallest hook that I have access to at this particular moment and uh, we're just using some red worms. So as we wait for the, the bobber to go out, and I want you guys to keep your eyes on this up here, the bobber is going to uh, start moving when a fish gets interested in it, and he's gonna start playing with it. And you'll see the bobber kind of shake around, maybe even plunge down a little bit. And actually just got a snag there. So let me go ahead and uh, throw this back in the water, and let's say, let's uh, let's throw it, let's throw it right there. That way the the um, the the bobber floats away from the weeds. Now, if you get a snag like that, you can reel in and you know try and jerk it out, and sometimes you'll get it out. But with a, a lower strength gear, that's not always possible. So there we go, we can see a fish is playing with it, and if you're paying attention to the right hand corner of the screen, we can see that the bobber is flopping all around, and we don't want to strike at the bobber until that bobber goes down and then starts going crazy. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at that again by casting this back out there, because we saw that bobber go down, but I didn't set my hook right away. And that's because I would have failed to set the hook if I had done that. So i use that as an example after this. So now we're waiting for another fish to bite on that bobber. And it won't take very long when you're pan fishing. They really like the red worms. And sometimes if you end up floating too far away from the lily pads, you might want to recast it. But for the most part, especially in this first lake, it's not particularly necessary. So 
there we go. We can see him. He's he's chomping on the worm. You know, he, he he's thinking about, you know, the lunch, the delicious red worm that he wants for lunch. But he hasn't uh, he hasn't decided that uh, he wants to uh, fully engulf it and take it. So we can't set the hook on him yet. And it really is tempting to set the hook early. But just keep your eye on that top right hand corner. Okay, right up here. Just keep your eye on that. You don't have to worry about the bobber in the water. So we're watching the bobber. We know that there's a fish there and we just have to be patient. That's the key, especially when bobber fishing, is to be patient. Wait for that bobber to start absolutely spazzing. And see, see what I mean? That bobber just started spazzing, it started moving left, it started moving right. Uh, really quickly and it dived down really quickly. You'll see it. It, uh, it, it looks like the bobber starts having a seizure. So we'll do that uh, one more time uh, just so you guys get an idea of what that looks like. And then I want to show you guys uh, what not to do because you could do a couple of things. First one is you're not going to catch a fish. The second one is, is he might steal your bait in the process. It's much better to let that bobber sit in the water than it is to strike early and potentially lose your bait. And now we're waiting for that bobber to go crazy. So we'll let him nibble on that on the worms. Continue to let him nibble on the worm. And when it starts going crazy, that's when we press both the left and the right mouse buttons. And that starts reeling in the line and it sets the hook. Okay. So if I do that early, we're not going to get a fish. And we could possibly lose bait. And sometimes your bait is going to float too far away from the fish, from the current. Don't worry about that too much. Just wait for the fish to start chomping on it. Hmm, looks like something might not be chasing it this time. We'll go ahead and reel it in. Sometimes you have to, have to reel it in and just you know, give it another cast out there. You know, you could leave the bait there for a while, and the fish aren't biting. If that's starting to happen, well, then it's just time to change location. So now let's let's go ahead and cast the, the bait back here so I can show you uh, a, a strike that's done too early. Okay, there we go. And now we have a fish chomping on it. So if I set the hook now, and there we go. Strike was done too early. So you don't want to get squirrely, and you don't want to... Um, hit it just a little bit too early. Now you can be too late, and that will happen occasionally until you get the the feel for how that bobber goes absolutely crazy. All right, guys, I've made a cut in the video here, and I want to talk to you guys about um, some tension settings and uh, how you can individually monitor the stress on your line, your rod, and your reel all at the same time. Now, if we intentionally snag our line we can see that there is individual tension and stress being applied to the rod the reel and the fishing line and as that tension increases we get closer and closer to potentially breaking that line so you're actually going to be starting the game with a setting turned off that I highly recommend you turn on so if you press escape and you press the gear up here in the top left hand corner you open up the options menu click on settings and then go over to gameplay I recommend you turn this checkbox on uh, this pro angler indicator and the reason for that is so that you can individually monitor the stress of each and every component of your fishing rod uh, individually and I think that is one of the most important uh, settings in the game, especially when um, you need to individually monitor the stress of your rod. So say you've hooked into a big fish because now you're, you know, you're starting to get a little bit higher level. Let's say you're level four, you're level six, and maybe you're fishing for some catfish and you need uh, those particular pieces of information to know if something's going to break or not. 
So I recommend that uh, you turn that particular setting on. Now one more thing I want to talk about here really quick is the chat box. Now normally you would be in the game and you would see all this this chat box being really in the way. Uh, another thing I recommend that you do is by pressing and holding down the control key you get your mouse to show up on the screen. Click on this little gear button and then click minimize. And what that's going to do is it's going to take that box of all the chat away. Now it doesn't take the chat away as you can see there's still chat on the window but it really cleans up the, inter the user interface and uh, that's one thing that I do like. You can also adjust uh, additional settings like you can uh, show timestamps of when everybody is catching what in real time. So, for instance, uh, this player caught this particular fish at uh, three uh, twenty-one in the morning my time. I don't like to show that, but <clears throat> you know some people do. You can also uh, filter out certain events, like let's say um, somebody broke a line, they caught a fish, they got an achievement, they leveled up or they're joining and leaving. You can enable or disable those. You can also increase or decrease the size of the font to uh, your particular liking and then you can also minimize that. So I, that's one thing I do recommend. It kind of helps a little bit with the immersion factor and it cleans up the game quite nice. So now that you guys know how to you know open up uh, the, all the hotkeys in a quick moment and see everything that uh, you want to see you guys know how to cast, uh, you know how to aim to cast, you know how to pitch, and you know what kind of signs to look for when you're fishing for fish, and you know when is the proper time to strike. I think that's good enough for the absolute beginner's tutorial to a fishing planet. Now, if you like this video and you found it helpful, uh, leave a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel please subscribe in the next episode we'll be covering more advanced techniques and we'll be going over the store so once you reach level four fishing here in this pond or maybe you've gotten bored to it and you want to go somewhere else uh, we can show you some more techniques some more things that you should be looking into like uh, rods reels baits you know when you want to start using uh, lures to fish and not just live baits or dead baits we'll talk about all sorts of things in the next episode so thank you very much for watching uh, i hope you enjoyed it or at least found it helpful and i will see you in the next video don't forget to keep your bait wet and you're going to catch fish. Later, guys.